Right, Prindown Da and Diachon Lord Hedyu. Again, my name's Chris. Thank you very much for coming today, and I'm here to hopefully introduce you to Tumbalum, which has been one of our very exciting projects over the last few years. A few more years than originally planned, however, COVID got in the way somewhat, not to mention COVID, but also uh, a, few, a, few, a few tail ends of hurricanes also uh, dragged us to a halt a few times. Um, so, firstly, well, to, obviously to discuss this site with you and explain exactly why we've come here, what we hope to achieve and what we've been doing over the last few years of investigations. So, for those who don't know Tumbalum, it is a absolutely fantastic earthwork located on a high point above Risca in South Wales near Newport. Now, it's a very noticeable monument within the local community. It's something you can see from miles away, although interestingly, it doesn't factor into the historical record for many years, even, even in mapping. Um, now, it occupies, like I say, a sort of dominant position on a ridge, and it's comprised of a fairly, fairly slight single earthwork uh, bank and ditch enclosure, which is following the promontory of the uh, hilltop. And then in the corner, at this end, is a very large motte that presumably has been set at a later date. Now, obviously, the assumption with this that we would go to is we're looking at probably an Iron Age site, which has got some form of later medieval reuse. Uh, that's it, though. It's our assumption. There is, until we arrived there, no investigations undertaken on this site, despite the fact it is a site that's often referenced in, in terms of trying to understand the, the communities within the Iron Age of South Wales uh, and uh, for the Romans. There's, there's, there's very few times has the fortress of Caelian ever been t discussed without having to mention the... the uh, the hill fort of Tumbalum that looms over it in the distance. So we arrived at this site. We were invited by the Tumbalum Society to come and investigate after what might seem like a bad thing, but the site caught fire, burning down most of uh, what was the heather and gorse up there. Uh, this actually presented us with an unusual opportunity to be able to see this site completely stripped of its vegetation and also exposed a few features that, until then, we had not known were there. So this kind of led both to some Barnum Society and Cadu to feel that you know, this, was a, this was a fairly rare opportunity to really get stuck into this site to see if we can make sense of what is, like I say, a very prominent earthwork and monuments within the local community of Risca and Newport. So, the first thing to do was our non-invasive non investigations of the site. Now, magnetometry was the first go-to. Uh, so, uh, for those who are fam uh, familiar with magnetometry, that's it's, uh, mapping out very, very slight changes in uh, the Earth's magnetic field in order to determine uh, past human activity. Now, one thing that tends to not go very well with magnetometry is grass fires. So it was that, in part, was a very interesting thing to undertake on this monument in terms of understanding the impact of the site in relation to those fires. And you can see, although you probably can't see, I should have made the picture bigger, I apologise. Um, the whole south end of the enclosure it was just noise. Scatters of very strong noise that follow a roughly linear pattern, which was reflected in uh, ridge and furrow cultivation that was visible on the surface of the enclosure. Um, and this is a sign of those fires running up those furrows. It's on that south side of the hill, which is that side that's it's possibly been impacted more by those fires. It's, it's uh, subject to those, uh, the winds coming off the Bristol Channel, so it's possibly acted as a bit of a flu, building up um, uh, the heat, or intensity of the heat on this side of the hill fort. Because interestingly, this side, which was equally burnt during that recent fire, not as affected in the magnetometry. Now, uh, off, before I go on a tangent on geophysics, the outcome of the geophysics, unfortunately, was slightly less encouraging in terms of the archaeology. But I suppose that in itself tells us something. Now, uh, 
Iron Age features in general that we would expect to see can often be very difficult to detect through geophysics, so it was a long shot anyway. But we picked up very little suggestion of significant occupational activity within the enclosure. There were some roughly circular features that needed to be tested, but as suspected, given the geological conditions, these mostly turned out to be natural. So, in addition to this, uh, my colleague Richard Hankinson undertook a topographic survey. Now, you'd be surprised how many of these monuments haven't had even that basic level of survey, and yet how really informative that type of survey can be. So, um, part of this mapped out a few, addition, a few of the features that were exposed by those fires, and they included a small mound here next to the lot, which is um, believed to be a cairn. And then alongside the earthworks at the southern end and the northern end were what appeared to be small stone platforms built up against the earthworks. Now, obviously, that was immediately, immediately quite an exciting prospect. Have we got some form of house platform that was maybe missed during the geophysics? They showed very slightly. Um, so that was something we wanted to really look at. Now, one of the other things that, it, that really got flagged up in this survey, and something that the, the monuments inspectors in the past have also made note of, is that there are big gaps in the earthwork, both the bank and the ditch, which has led a lot of people in the past to speculate, is this site unfinished? So that is one of the many things we had ringing in our head when we arrived at this site. So, that wasn't 2021, was it? Oh, never mind. Um, right, so, first we started with an evaluation over some of the earthworks, and this began at the top up here, firstly over one of those uh, platforms, and another looking into the ditch. So, what we wanted to basically do was, uh, A, get uh, an assessment of what these stone mounds were, but also get into that ditch to determine its construction and be hopefully get some form of absolute dating for the construction of the site. Now, there was also another area, now going back to that whole unfinished possibility, which was down here at an intersection between uh, several, some of the earthworks and ditch, which appeared to be unfinished, where you've got part of this ditch section, which is interspersed, broken up, uh, so the big question was, is this part of the enclosure, has it been pushed in at a later date in order to make the site more accessible, or is it uh, the product of, of something that's been unfinished? So um, we excavated across the earthworks and the ditch, and the results kind of lent towards that suggestion of an unfinished earthwork again. So at the top, you had the very slight traces of an upturned bank. So something has been dug up and thrown on top. However, what was left of the ditch at the bottom, now within the evaluation trench, was the terminus end of that ditch. So it, we confirmed in doing that 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 ditch did not continue through to the ditch at the far end. So it's not a case of this ditch having been later backfilled it simply was never excavated. So that's a fairly uh, helpful and conclusive uh, result from that. Now at the northern end, we wanted to look at one of those platforms. So this was how they looked like initially when it was being stripped off. Now you can see, get a general sense for why we might have been quite excited about these platforms. They have a roughly circular pattern to them, there's a slight hollow in the middle, and there's a bit of a scatter of stone around it. However, once that was excavated into a little bit more, it was very quickly realised that this was actually a large collection of fairly loose stone. Very little in the way of stone or clay bonding between it. It's material that's been extracted from the ditch, and it's been thrown up on top, but as a stockpile. So that is a, I mean, it's very, very uh, tangible evidence that we are looking at a site that is, it, it's 
ended partway through that development stage. They are collecting that stone, the useful stone, because a lot of the ditches that were excavated were cut into the bedrock. So they're collecting that stone up, they're piling it up against the ramparts for later use as a construction material. So certainly not the outcome we'd hoped for. Uh, something more definitive occupation would have been fantastic, but I'd say that's uh, getting towards being fairly conclusive. Now, we then also looked into the ditch. This is where uh, maybe a slight spanner in the works was thrown. And fantastic cut ditches along this uh, northern side, which into the bedrock, as you can see, it's a very narrow ex excavation trench there, but um, we managed to get through down to the bottom. And what we discovered in doing this, hopefully you can see that, um, very roughly. <laughs> Problem with, uh, unfortunately, digital drawings would have been better with a photo, but never mind. Uh, narrow trench. Um, there are two cuts or two distinct features. So there's an underlying feature which has then later been recut. So that's significant in a sense that it already produces two phases to that site so uh, obviously we already by this point we're thinking oh it's temporary it was never finished but we've already got that uh, uh, two phases now we were able to obtain carbon dates that later cut iron age middle to late iron age the lower feature neolithic so it was slightly unexpected now I should stress one date, one Neolithic date, a Neolithic uh, causeway enclosure doth not make. Um, however, again, the tendency for archaeologists to get a little bit excited. Um, that then really started to drive our direction moving forward. We've got this very tantalizing date, the potential of uh, much earlier activity on this site. So yes, maybe in the Iron Age they didn't get around to finishing it, but maybe they were trying to build upon something that was already there before, such as a Neolithic causeway enclosure. And one of the interesting things about Neolithic causeway enclosures is the ditches aren't always complete. They're often interspersed. So that would help to explain the fact we've got those terminating sections of ditch. So we then led to so just to obviously summarise that a little bit. Um, so I think the geophysics quite, is quite clearly demonstrated. We didn't have that occupation within the Iron Age, which was a bit of a shame. But uh, like I say, it's, it's you know, programmed in a certain direction. It was potentially looking at that Neolithic date and also trying to further understand uh, to what extent the, the hill fault was, was unfinished. So that led us to our more recent phase of investigations, so we wanted to have a quick look at the cairn, which is right next to the mot. Again, return to the, some of these sections of partly incomplete earthwork, but then also take the opportunity to again look at one of our um, subcircular uh, stone mounds, just to make sure that that first mound we did wasn't a fluke and to ensure that obviously there was potential for, for more um, occupational evidence. So, the first section ended up looking at these, uh, like I said, the partly incomplete sections of earthworks. Now, we've produced more or less the same result. And what was interesting, again, is we had the case of <clears throat> a very slight bank has been formed, and there's, the landscape itself has been terraced into, and some soil deposited on top, but no ditch has been formed. So it suggests, again, maybe it's part way through a construction phase. And what was slightly more disappointing was there wasn't that earlier feature below, so we didn't have that opportunity, again, to go in for a Neolithic date uh, of an earlier... Because earlier, um, the, the hope is, with this trench, is we will go, if, if this was indeed a section of the hill fort that was largely incomplete, Therefore, it's had maybe limited impact on that earlier Neolithic phase, the logic being we'd therefore have part of that Neolithic phase intact that we could sample. But unfortunately, it did not pan out that way. So we also then took the opportunity to have a quick look at one of the other um, ditch cut sections, and it's on the south-facing side. Now, what, again, 
So they had gone, so obviously, some extent here to excavate the ditch. However, interestingly, it's at another mid-phase of construction. We've got several phases of construction achieved on, the, that, on the site. On the north side, you've got a ditch that's been much, uh, clearly completed. It's cut down to the base of rock. You've got this south side where they're part the way through digging out all this bedrock, which you can see the knife edge ridges of it. Uh, running through into the trench, which they're slowly picking that apart and then stocking that on top. Um, but again, it doesn't give the sense of a ditch that maybe was complete. It's not had that nice rounded off base to it. So then we also wanted to look at the cairn. Now, um, I say a little look because we know there's a risk with cairns that if you go uh, all guns blazing, you'll bite off far more than you can chew. So what we wanted to do with this was to expose the outer edge of the cairn, uh, which hopefully looking for some of those more uh, diagnostic features like a curb, just to give us a better sense of whether, A, yes, is this a cairn, or is it maybe, as some had speculated, associated with the medieval phase of the site, maybe a bridging point into the malt. Um, happily, we can say that it is a cairn, and it has got a nice pattern to these uh, bonded stones forming a rough curb um, around the outer edge. So we've got that, I think so, we pretty successfully identified that, that Bronze Age connection to the site, which is brilliant, which is a shame we can't uh, get any further into that Neolithic, but hey-ho. Um, and then we also had one of those other sections of the uh, stone piles. Again, same situation. It is a stockpile. So this, interestingly, was directly above that section of mid-excavation ditch. So they have been pulling stone out of the ditch, extracting it, and again, stockpiling it on the side of uh, the earthworks, presumably in order to, to potentially revetments of the earthworks, the, uh, the, the banks of the enclosure, were very simple, upturned earth, fairly loose. Presumably there, was a, uh, there may have been an intention to uh, enhance them or there may have been an intention to use some of that stone for structures internally. So, I think as well, I mean, it's pretty safe from what uh, we've discussed, the overall result of this is a site that is incomplete. Um, we've only really got that firm idea still of Iron Age date, although I do stress that it, it, probably, it was still only one sample for within that ditch. Um, as is typical for the Iron Age in Wales, there was no material culture at all, nothing to help back up that date. Unusually, there was no Roman either. Now, usually, if you've got some of these big earthworks, the Romans are so good at leaving all their rubbish around that some of it would have made it in there at a later date, and it didn't. So, again, that maybe starts to hint towards that, a very temporary or slight site that, that really wasn't around for very long. And it is also very exposed. It's very high up. It's quite an incredible feat in itself to have... To have it, was, it was enough of a feat to carry up all our equipment every morning in order to dig, let alone for teams of people during the Iron Age to be going up there and excavating the whole site by hand. So... Um, Obviously, there are a few questions that we still have looming here. One is this, the mot slapped on the corner. Now, we did start to delve slightly into uh, the mot excavation or the, the ditch around it. However, it was quite significantly backfilled in the between the 1960s and the 1980s uh, to an extent that was far too unsafe for us to ever realistically reach the bottom. But it was an incredible, almost vertical-sided, rock-cut ditch. There is an opportunity there because uh, the earthwork itself is artificial, so it's been upturned. It's not a natural feature, in which case we have the potential there to get scientific absolute dating. If we can access that original soil level sealed by that earthwork, uh, we can use something called OSL, to therefore get an idea of uh, when that earthwork was built. Um, hopefully these are some more things that we'll have to look at going into the future and we'll be in discussion with both uh, Tumbalam Society and CADU to see if we can uh, strategize how we're gonna move forward. But thank you very much for listening. Does anyone have any questions?